Okay, so good morning or good evening, everyone. Um, so the challenge uh, we face as a result of the climate change requires a fundamental shift of uh, thinking and cross-industry collaboration. So many thanks for the OCP for organizing this webinar, where we are glad to introduce to you the Shell Integrated uh, Immersion Cooling Solutions, enabling game changing uh, energy use reduction at data centers, okay? My name is Eduardo de Azevedo, and um, I'm a product application specialist at Shell Global Commercial Technology, based in Hamburg, Germany. I'm currently leading the R&D efforts uh, of the Shell Immersion Cooling Fluid for the data centers and the synergies related to the material compatibility. It's my pleasure to be here today with you. I would like to introduce also Sandeep. Thank you, Edu. Uh... Hi everyone, I'm very happy to be here. My name is Sandeep Kamath. I'm the Global Marketing Manager uh, for Shell, uh, and I lead our marketing efforts uh, for, for process oils, uh, for immersion cooling fluids, and also for our EV thermal fluids. Right, uh, this slide, uh, a, a, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of words on this slide, uh, but uh, uh, in, in, in summary, what it means is, you know, please don't use the information uh, that we share today in our presentation uh, for trading of uh, shell shares. Yeah, that's, that's all, all it means. The agenda for today, um, yeah, we, you know, we'll obviously introduce the topic, uh, then we'll talk a little bit about our integrated uh, immersion cooling solution offering for data centers. Uh, Edu will speak about our uh, shell immersion cooling fluid that we have engineered and formulated uh, specifically for immersion cooled uh, data centers. Uh, we'll also speak a little bit about our partnership with Aspiritas. Uh, Edu will talk about uh, Shell's work uh, at the ACS and and uh, specifically uh, the um, uh, the work that we are co-leading in material compatibility, and then we'll open the floor for Q and A. All right. So uh, Edu already referred to a little bit, um, you know, on on the challenge, right? So um, I think the biggest challenge facing uh, humanity today is 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 climate change. And this is a challenge that uh, that no one person or one com company or even one country can solve on its own. You know, this is something uh, that I uh, that 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 we believe you you know the whole of humankind needs to come together and 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 try to crack uh, uh, quite soon actually. And um, this actually also extends uh, to uh, to our way of life, uh, working with data and uh, you know emails and and social media and and internet and you know uh, moving on to big data and you know uh, connected devices and 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 whatnot, right? So internet now is the fundamental part of 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 our life. We can't imagine you know uh, leaving our homes without our phone. It, it seems like you know one of our limbs is missing then. Um, but uh, but not many people are aware that uh, the just the data centers today use about one percent of the global uh, energy, um, and including the infrastructure, including the uh, the networks, that actually increases to two percent. And to give you an idea, two percent is 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 the energy that is actually used by the airlines industry pre-COVID. So that's a big uh, big big number actually. And uh, we are all uh, aware that you know our use of data is only going to increase. Uh, you know we are using more and more amounts of data. You know it was 3G before and 4G and now 5G, and you know that's only going to increase. So the amount of data that's being generated is exponentially increasing. Uh, so the need for data centers and and associated infrastructure is increasing, and so is then you know the the consumption of of energy would also be expected to increase. But then. Uh, then, then that is uh, uh, sort of adding to the challenge that we have with with, with climate change, right? So, what what can we do to to meet this climate to meet this challenge while at the same time, you know, maintaining our standards of living? The challenge today is we have the need of more and more, uh, um, you know, connected devices, you know, high performance computing, near real time analysis, uh, increasing amounts of you know data infrastructure that is needed. Uh, but the fact today is still most of the data centers uh, and infrastructure is still using you know air cooling which is air conditioning and in very simple terms what that means is we are using more energy to remove the waste heat that is generated from the data centers you know so it's not a really 
you know very clean or very sustainable way to to operate our data centers you know so is there is there a solution that that you know we can deploy uh, to run our data centers more sustainably um, you know while still maintaining you know the the standards and 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 still maintaining um, you know our requirement of 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 more and more data and more high performance computing so shell has uh, uh, developed an integrated immersion cooling solution which we believe can enable game changing energy use reduction at data centers so this slide uh, you know i'll just talk you through uh, the key pillars of of our immersion cooling solution so you see the triangle here in the center of the slide uh, the heart of the triangle or the center of the triangle is the immersion cooled server uh, that we have partnered with uh, with Aspiritas. Uh, it is a Dutch company, uh, you know, and they have developed a fantastic, you know, server uh, that basically takes all of the electronics, uh, you know, that goes into a typical uh, uh, data server and immerses it in, in their server module uh, in a fluid. And that is the shell immersion cooling fluid, the, the top part of the triangle. Uh, this is a fluid that we have specifically uh, engineered uh, and formulated for immersion cooling of servers. We have actually co-developed this fluid together with Aspreta, so they have helped us a lot in the last uh, year and a half, you know, to, uh, to, to tell us how the fluid needs to perform and, and uh, you know, what are the characteristics and help, helped us with also the testing of, of the fluid. Then you have in the center, you see the blue part, that is the waste heat reuse. Right, so this is also a solution that that shell can enable uh, to reuse the you know waste heat that is being generated by by the server and the fluid actually enables to do that because you have the electronics immersed in the fluid so the fluid is a much better you know uh, carrier of the heat than than air uh, that heat can then be you know passed on to a closed uh, cycle you know uh, water circuit and you know you can use that then uh, that that waste heat you know for heating of the offices or for you know hot water or whatever whatever purpose that is required then you have uh, the you know bottom right part of the triangle which is renewable energy and shell has a big portfolio globally you know of renewable energy services that we can provide whether that is uh, on the grid you know through your normal electric connections uh, where it is available in, in in certain geographies and and we can also provide um, installations of you know solar and uh, you know wind farms uh, depending on the location of the data center and depending on the on the need so for example if it's a if it's a if it's a sunny place if it's remote you know then probably a solar installation uh, uh, would be um, would be good if it's more, you know more of a windy place then maybe you know wind farms might be might be more suitable and then looking at the left uh, uh, bottom part of the triangle, uh, carbon credits. So here, Shell is able to also offer, you know, a carbon credit solution. So we are able to look at your entire portfolio, your data, your entire data center, but also your entire, your entire portfolio of uh, of uh, business, and of and offer you a carbon credit solution to offset your carbon credits that you have through our nature-based uh, uh, portfolio. So why should you, you know, move from a well-established air-cooled uh, server to an, uh, you know, immersed cooled server? We believe that, uh, you know, the the benefits are massive, and you know, those we have tried to depict uh, down in the uh, bottom yellow boxes. So we 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 believe, and you know, Aspiritas has done a lot of testing on this. Uh, so up to 50% of energy footprint reduction is possible from an, you know, compared to an average data center just by going for immersion cooling not only that you can also expect to increase your cpu performance by up to 40 percent and that's because uh, because the electronic components are cooled you know in 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 such a good way they are able to be clocked up to much higher speeds and so you get much better performance from that then if this is taken into account from a design and planning perspective right before the data center you know is 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 built then there is a potential to even reduce the actual physical size of the data center because you can do away with lots of the infrastructure you know that that's for example required for for you know air conditioning that's not needed anymore i spoke a little bit all already about 
you know the waste heat reuse solution so up to 99% of the waste heat that is generated by the electronics by the by the servers that can be actually reused as 55 degrees uh, centigrade hot water and also there is a possibility of actually reducing cost you know so depending on the size of the data center so the bigger the better uh, that you can actually reduce your capex and also your opex by somewhere around 30 to 45 percent versus an average data center build so overall you know all benefits here and you are actually you know even making it a more sustainable solution you are helping you know towards uh, the climate challenge as well uh, yeah so what can i say i mean we really believe in in this solution and you know that's why uh, that's why shell is now an active you know participant at ocp and you know we are very closely collaborating uh, with with aspiritas as as we'll talk to you on on the next slides right so this slide we have just tried to depict a, a model of you know what 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 we foresee or you know what 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 our ambition is with you know the data center uh, build and you know the integrated solution so here, if you look at uh, sort of, you know, the center left of the slide uh, where it's, you know, uh, with the tags data center. So this this is sort of, let's say the data center build. So here, if you have the data center build with the immersion cooling servers from Aspiritas, with the immersion cooling fluid from, from Shell, then I spoke a little bit about the renewable power. And here you see, you know, Shell is able to offer renewable power through the grid or also through, you know, solar installations and, and wind, wind installations. Uh, the reuse of heat is, you know, basically the waste heat solution that we can offer where that heat can actually be used to, you know, heat up a neighboring town, um, you know, or heat up your, uh, you know, data center or your office block or use, use for hot water uh, if, if that is the need and in this total sort of is a closed you know uh, sustainable sort of loop which we believe is you know a much much more sustainable solution uh, and it's also you know not you don't need to pay any more uh, for that it actually will help you to to run your data center more efficiently with higher performance and with also a reduced cost Right. So here on this slide, we've just tried to summarize, you know, all of the uh, the main pillars or components of of the various, um, uh, you know, offers that we have in that integrated uh, solution. Uh, so on the left, you will see, you know, this this black box. This is the server module, uh, which is an Aspirita server module. Um, it is, you know, designed for uh, immersing of the whole of the electronics in it. Um, uh, it's a completely flexible uh, solution. It can be deployed, uh, you know, even in standard office spaces. Uh, although the most bang for the buck can come when this is actually taken into, uh, you know, uh, account even right before in the planning stage of a new data center build, because then you can actually get the benefits of you know, uh, engineering the waste heat reuse and doing away with the air conditioning infrastructure and so on. One of the unique uh, properties or unique uh, selling points of uh, the Aspirita solution is that it is, uh, there are no moving parts. So there is no, there are no pumps, you know, so that pump doesn't waste any more energy. Uh, while, you know, because of being, uh, because there are no pumps and because, you know, the uh, the whole solution is based on normal convection currents. You know, the electronics are able to actually clock up to even higher speeds and you are able to extract even more, more energy out of the system to make it uh, useful. You know, so the 55 degrees hot water that, that I spoke about. It is completely climate independent. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't use uh, water per se. Uh, you know, so you can actually deploy such a data center right in the middle of a desert. Uh, it is optimized, you know, for high performance and, and heat reuse, as, as I spoke before. Uh, and it is designed in such a way that, you know, it can be, uh, uh, the maintenance can be done very easily, you know, and without any, uh, without any spills at all. So Aspiritas also has uh, developed uh, equipment, you know, that can, that can help in, maintain, in, in, the, in the normal maintenance cycles, you know, and, and keep it very, very hygienic. A uh, little bit about the shell uh, immersion cooling fluid, as I mentioned, you know, this is, we have co-developed this with Aspirita. So over the last uh, year and a half, uh, you know, and this is specifically engineered and formulated for immersion cooling. And Aspirita has helped us actually uh, to tell us how the fluid needs to perform and helped us with all of the, all of the testing part. 
So Edu will be talking uh, in much more depth about you know what what uh, what are the benefits of our immersion cooling fluid uh, on the next slide. And then lastly, our you know renewable energy and waste heat reuse uh, solutions that we that we have offered through the Shell Energy portfolio. Um, you know, so we are able to offer uh, depending on your needs. You know, power that is on the grid, off the grid. Uh, waste heat reuse uh, solutions and also i mentioned the carbon credits uh, solutions through our nature based uh, solution portfolio all right uh, thanks sandeep um, and this slide would like to focus a little bit more on the fluid itself and and also would like to mention that um, um, as sandeep just uh, walk was through a little bit in the uh, on the fluid side and it was co-engineered with uh, aspirators. Um, it was optimized for aspirators and natural, natural convection driven um, uh, technology, but can also uh, be used in the pump or force or force at cir circulation systems as well. And the shell immersion cooling fluid is a synthetic uh, single phase immersion cooling fluid made from natural gas using shell GTL, it's a, which means gas to liquid technology. And uh, GTL fluids have uh, a water white color and, uh, and offer a uniform chemical structure, a high flash point and a low volatility and an outstanding light and thermal stability. Uh, the products are colorless and, and contain virtually no sulfur, uh, nitrogen or aromatics that are found in conventional uh, crude oil based products. And um, associated to the high purity of the GTL medicinal base oil, we specifically selected the additives to ensure uh, even higher thermal and oxidation stability uh, during the operation. Uh, and for us at Shell, as you know, uh, the safety uh, of the employees is the uh, customers and the society is the utmost priority. Uh, as uh, the GTL synthetic base oil meets the US and European pharmacopoeia um, purity requirements and is also food grade uh, certified. The safety of the people handling uh, the fluid is also is improved. And also the fluid extremely lower volatility and non evaporating uh, characteristics contributes to uh, not only with a safer environment, but also with a sustainability and not uh, depleting the ozone layer. Uh, in easy words, uh, to, uh, to the purity of the GTL, um, there is nothing, uh, nearly nothing in the oil which can uh, react with the components. Okay. So, uh, as mentioned before, the challenge we all face from climate change requires a fundamental shift in thinking and across industry collaboration, right? And OCP, uh, we see as a leading forum and organization where we have the chance to exchange uh, with key uh, exchange information and experience with the key industry participants to identify and enable decarbonization pathways and, and to follow towards the net zero emissions future and more sustainable solutions. So now that we uh, uh, Shell is a member, we have the chance to collaborate and contribute with the immersion cooling technologies adoption by the industry. For example, uh, Shell is actively involved in the ACS, uh, the Advanced Cooling Solutions uh, Workstreams, uh, focusing on the requirements related to the immersion technology. Uh, Shell is also co-leading a new workstream recently created to focus uh, spe specifically on a database for immersion cooling. For example, uh, in this slide uh, was presented last month during the OCP Tech Week event where we had a great panel a discussion with uh, 3M, Microsoft, and Dell about the importance of the material compatibility in immersion cooling developments or applications. Uh, and we see that uh, this is a complex topic and becoming of one of the most important sub subjects because of the intrinsic, uh, intrinsic relation between the components and the fluids immersed um, in the models, right? So through the OCP platforms um, and the work groups, uh, we are aiming to standardize uh, the main compatibility test procedures and adopted by the industry through this collaboration, exchanging experience, good practice among uh, fluid suppliers like ourselves, OEMs and integrators. And 
And we uh, work with multiple strategic partners and companies around the world. And uh, not only with, um, with Osperitas, um, uh, which we, we developed, uh, we co developed the engineer this fluid, uh, which, by the way, uh, perform multiple certification tests. And, and there are several deployments up and running at this moment. Uh, but also with IT components and manufacturers uh, by testing their components in our GTL synthetic um, fluid under different operation conditions. And, and going further, uh, we, we also uh, uh, are working with polymers and, and compounders, material suppliers in collaboration for testing and evaluating their materials for immersive applications. Those materials and polymers companies are very keen to work with us to identify the compatibility uh, uh, of their materials uh, for immersion uh, with our GTL synthetic uh, fluid so that their uh, materials are available in the industry, um, let's say, uh, ready for this apl new application field as well, avoiding any surprises during the, the operation and increasing the, um, re the equipment reliability. So through this collaboration, we are uh, able to identify any challenge on compatibility in advance. For example, APDM uh, with APDM elastomers and help um, the suppliers to develop an alternative polymers or compounds which are more compatible with the fluid. And for example, this, tables, uh, this table illustrates um, a guideline based on tests performed at our laboratories and the components um, are normally made from different uh, materials and, and formulations. And therefore, uh, the compatibility behavior may differ from each component supplier to the other. And for a detailed um, uh, investigation about the compatibility uh, performance for a specific part, uh, Shao is ready to perform detailed compatibility tests uh, at our own labs um, if the parts are sent to our laboratories. Okay. So, uh, in, in this slide, we, we invite you to join the immersion, uh, the immersion work streams and contribute. Uh, and details in the working documents, such as uh, the immersion, immersion requirements and design for guidelines for immersion coolant IT equipment, and the material compatibility database working documents that we, we, we started uh, to work on it, uh, can be found on the project wiki links um, displayed on the screen. So uh, with, um, with that said, uh, I would like to thank you for your attention um, for joining this webinar and would like to open the floor for qu questions and answers. Thank you very much.